San Antonio starts right now. All eyes on Russia as it marks a military holiday with possible consequences for Ukraine. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on that and a new round of sanctions on Russia coming up. A silly question this morning. Was it hot enough for you? Yeah. Well, hopefully it won't be quite as hot this week. We knew it was coming, but it was a broiler of a weekend. Nonetheless, hope you had a great Mother's Day. Good morning, everybody. Let's get the week going. It is Monday, May 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, it was very hot, but at least we were prepared. We were. It felt more like August outside, though, rather than early May, Mike yeah. Osterhage. Yeah, basically. Is with that a little better this week? By later on in the week, yes, okay. we're still we're not going to hit 100 today, but we're still going to have heat index readings that are going to be well up into the hundreds. So that's you know where you get around 105, your body doesn't cool itself uh, very well at all. And we hit a couple of records. We hit a record on uh, Saturday, and then the weekend we had two days in a row, obviously at triple digits. It's the earliest by just a couple of days that we've hit that here in town. And uh, boy, it just I mean just looks hot out there. It is hot, 76 degrees right now 77 Porta say hello to Canyon Lake everybody's well up into the uh, mid 70s and we are <clears throat> excuse me more than 10 degrees above normal right now still plenty of humidity out there I mean when you get these dew points 74 and above that 76 at Stinson that is just window dripping fog up your glasses however you want to describe it kind of humidity out there uh, we don't really have any heat index right now to deal with it may feel a couple of degrees warmer than the actual air temperature but yeah later on today that's definitely going to be an issue mold moderate grass and pecan are both on the low side this morning not going to be dropping down all that much. Got cloud cover as well as that very high humidity, so that won't allow temperatures to drop down all that much. Going for 97 later on today. That would tie the record high temperature today. Heat index, though, is going to be about 105. And all around the area, we're going to be seeing these heat index readings well up there, 105 and above, even about 112 around Catula. So you really, really have to take it easy. Yes, it won't be as hot the rest of the week. We'll talk about that and maybe, just maybe, a stray thunderstorm here or there. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Top story this morning, an hours long standoff here in San Antonio ends with one man in custody. It all started last night around six and went till about midnight. The scene unfolding a West South Cross near Leal Middle School. Investigators tell us a man is accused of attacking a family member outside and then reportedly went inside and barricaded himself in for hours. He eventually came out and was taken into police custody. And in case you missed it this weekend, San Antonio voters approved the city's largest bond ever, $1.2 billion. And Sarah Costa joins us now with all the details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephanie. That bond was broken up into six propositions from streets to drainage to parks, even affordable housing. All six passed. Some of the highlights in the $1.2 billion bond package include $103.5 million for expanding the Greenway Trail system by another 21 miles, $100.5 million to reconstruct failed streets around the city, improvements to 30% of the city's parks, including nine new park properties and $150 million for affordable housing. Mayor Ron Nirenberg said the results showed voters faith in the city's future and each other as San Antonians. We are laser focused on keeping the promise that we all made to each other back when the, in the height of the last two years challenges, which is that we are not satisfied to going back to the way things were. We want to come back stronger, more equitable and more resilient as a city. And that's what this vote says. The city has said the bond program will not raise the property tax rate. Now, voters also gave the green light for Northside ISD's nearly billion dollar bond. Now, Governor Greg Abbott says the district may be under investigation for potentially pressuring staff to vote. The money is meant to help renovate older schools in the district. Governor Greg Abbott says Northside ISD will be investigated by Education Commissioner Mike Morath. We're still waiting to hear back from NISD. You can read more about these stories right now on ksat.com. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, the world is watching Russia. The country is now facing new sanctions as it observes Victory Day, commemorating victory over Nazi Germany during World War II. Today's military holiday is also being closely examined for signs of Russia's next steps in Ukraine, where First Lady Dr. Jill Biden spent Mother's Day and Canada's Prime Minister met face to face with Ukraine's president. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with a closer look. 
Today marks Victory Day in Russia and uncertainty in Ukraine. Russia revering its military and World War II era win over Nazi Germany. War torn Ukraine closely watching President Putin's address to his people and the world. In advance of Victory Day, President Biden and G7 leaders sent out new sanctions, saying Vladimir Putin's actions bring shame on Russia and the historic sacrifices of its people. Those sanctions call for cutting off imports of Russian oil, targeting Russian state TV networks, and banning consulting and other services supporting Russia's war. All of this amid a raging battle for control of the East. Ukrainian officials releasing this video, the aftermath of a Russian bombing of a school in the Luhansk region where dozens were hiding, at least 60 people feared dead. At the holdout Azovstal steel complex in Mariupol, the last remaining civilians have reportedly escaped and the far right Azov regiment vows a full fight. We are basically here a dead man. Yeah? Uh, most of us know this, yes. And uh, why we fight so fiercely. I thought it was important to show the Ukrainian people that this war has to stop. High profile support from the West. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden holding a Mother's Day meeting with Ukraine's First Lady and displaced children in an unannounced visit to Western Ukraine. And Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Kyiv in a meeting with President Zelensky pledging continued support. As you defend your freedoms, your democracy, your way of life. Prime Minister Trudeau also announcing Canada's reopening of its embassy in Kyiv. U.S. diplomats were also in Kyiv over the weekend ahead of plans to resume operations soon. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. An update now on that shooting up in Round Rock, north of Austin, that forced a neighborhood to shelter in place over the weekend. Police have identified the suspect as 31-year-old Henry Tolentino from Round Rock. Investigators say he's accused of shooting a neighbor before running down the street in a black trench coat armed with an AK-47. Round Rock police later caught up with Tolentino and exchanged gunfire with him. He was found dead in a wooded area, but it's still not clear if he took his own life or was killed by police gunfire. The neighbor who was shot was taken to a hospital. The battle over abortion rights appears to be heading to the Senate floor. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced Sunday he will be putting a bill to codify Roe versus Way up for a vote later this week. Democrats are hoping they can preserve abortion rights that way. 13 states have so-called trigger laws, which would quickly ban abortion if Roe is a return. And one of those states is Mississippi and its governor. Tate Reeves says ending Roe would be a big win for abortion opponents. We're trying to provide those uh, potential expectant mothers uh, the resources that they need so that they, they can go to a full term of pregnancy. If they choose to keep that child, then, then that's a, a great outcome. And we'll have a little more on this story later in the newscast. Now to the extreme fire danger in the southwest U.S. In northern New Mexico, more than 176,000 acres have already burned and firefighters are struggling to contain the flames. The high winds and bone dry conditions threatening to make fire much worse. Uh, the flames have already burned an area larger than the city of Chicago. Firefighters are working around the clock to try to stay ahead of what the National Weather Service is calling a potentially historic critical fire weather event. We've done everything we can so far and are continuing to do everything we can to stop this spread. But what it really boils down to is we're just humans and Mother Nature's driving this ship. The fire has burned for more than a month and has forced 12,000 families from their homes. Time now, 439 and 76 degrees for now. Just ahead on GMSA, the warnings from the American tech giants about the impact of COVID on their operations overseas. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. We are looking at I-10 and Provan. Things are moving there, as well as I-10 and Callahan. And outside with live cam, it was like a clam bake this weekend or a crawfish boil, whatever you want. Uh, we'll see what the forecast is looking like for the rest of the week. And is there any rain in our extended forecast? Mike is going to have an update coming up right here on The Morning Show. 442 COVID cases on the rise across the country with hospitalizations also climbing. There are now about 19,000 patients being treated for COVID and that's up 10% from last week. ABC's Phil Lupoff reports. 
COVID infections and hospitalizations climbing across the country. More than 40 states and territories seeing an increase of 10% or more in the last week. In New York, Governor Kathy Hochul announcing on Twitter she's tested positive for COVID, as the mayor of New York City isn't ruling out a new mask mandate. The Biden administration pushing Congress for additional COVID funding. This virus continues to evolve, and we may see a pretty sizable wave of infections, hospitalizations, and deaths this fall and winter. Concern tonight is well about the global supply chain after COVID lockdowns in Shanghai and other areas of China continue to disrupt business across the world. Apple, Tesla, Procter & Gamble among the companies having to close factories, saying the ripple effect could last into the summer. I didn't see my kids for three months. I didn't see the world for three months. In Las Vegas, Rowena Salas spent this Mother's Day thanking the doctors and nurses who saved her life. She gave birth early while struggling with COVID, then quickly fell into a coma just after Thanksgiving. Three months of care, finally meeting her son Oliver for the first time. I am grateful to be here today and to be able to care for my babies and see my family and everyone else that cared for us. I'm grateful for all of you. And even as hospitalizations and infections continue to rise, the daily death rate is falling. And that is proof, the CDC says, that vaccines and booster shots work. Still, the U.S. could reach one million COVID deaths this week. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. In time now, 443 and 76 degrees for now. New details are expected today into the death of three Americans at a resort in the Bahamas. That's next in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in paradise. It definitely gives me a cause for concern just because you want to know what happened. New details emerging as investigators try to piece together what caused three mysterious deaths at the luxury Sandals Emerald Bay Resort on Great Exuma in the Bahamas. Three individuals were found dead on a hotel property with one individual still alive. Authorities say the cause is still under investigation, but they don't suspect foul play. Local business owner Thomasina Ferguson, who runs a restaurant just down the street from Sandals, telling GMA about the uncertainty in the Everything area. Everything is a hush-hush. Everyone is just waiting on the coroner's report. Everything has been hush-hush. It's not much talk about it. And we'll have much more on this unfolding mystery with a live report from the Bahamas coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Great Exuma, Bahamas. The average U.S. price of regular grade gasoline jumped 15 cents over the past two weeks to $4.38 per gallon. Experts say the current price is just a nickel below the highest average price in history, $4.43, which was set on March 11th. The average price at the pump, $1.36 higher than it was a year ago. Nationwide, the highest average price for regular grade gas in the in San Francisco Bay Area was at $5.85 per gallon. The lowest average is in Tulsa, Oklahoma at $3.80 per gallon. And we're going to have more on this story a little later in the newscast. Inflation continues to rise at levels we haven't seen in more than 40 years, and food prices are a big part of those increases, especially when it comes to beef and chicken. There are some ways to save. Consumer Reports suggest limiting animal proteins and substituting them for high-protein foods like eggs, beans, and peas. They're generally cheaper and are linked to health benefits. Sticking to a list and buying generic brands can also help. Store brands we have found can cost as little as 25% less than the name brands. And we have found in Consumer Reports that the quality can be as good as or better than the name brands. Consumer Reports also says shopping apps like Basket, Ibotta, and Flip can help you find the lowest prices, store specials, and coupons to help you save. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning, looking there at I-37 where things are moving. Also at Loop 1604, actually pretty quiet there at Valley Meadow. Well, warm this morning. Uh, we've only dropped down to about 76 degrees. You know it's been a warm couple of mornings when the uh, morning lows are hovering in the upper 70s to near about 80 degrees, Mike Osterhage. Last hour, we did have a slight bit of a heat index to deal with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because it just takes a couple of different numbers to, to come into play with it. But um, back to high numbers, talking about gas. Yes. yes. I think 20, about 21 gallons, something like that, filled up this weekend. It was 80 bucks. $80. Uh, no wonder. Yeah, this is back yes. up to like 389 I think, a gallon or something like that. My husband filled up. He said, hey, that's part of your Mother's Day 
<laughs> wow. I was like, oh, that expensive. Okay. Okay. That's the way you want to play it, Louise. Okay. But I said thank you. Yeah, it helps. Afternoon folks need to have a talk with that boy. Okay. So, all right. Uh, here's uh, what a lot of people saw this weekend. I mean, in this one thermometer out there in Converse, 103, and the heat index was 108. Now, what's always kind of deceiving is when you look at, well, you say, well, 30% humidity, that doesn't seem like a lot. But that's based on the 103, so that's why we don't really talk about relative humidity that much. Talk about dew points because dew point was still 65 degrees, and when you get above 60, you feel it, and that's why you had that heat index of 108. So again, heat uh, relative humidity. The term relative, it's only relative to the actual air temperature. Right now, we've got a lot of clouds out there and uh, talking about 100 degree days. Yep, two. We chalked up two of them officially out there at the airport this weekend. And 101, that was a record Saturday. Sunday, 101. The record was 102. And this is the earliest that we've hit two consecutive 100 degree days and previously it was we're just a couple of days ahead of that it was the 11th and 12th back in 1967 and I got to start to obviously keeping track back in uh, 2013 41 that's the most recent number three on the list 57 and the record is uh, 59 100 degree days back in 2009 just think two years prior to that we didn't hit 100 I don't think we're going to be doing well obviously we aren't going to be doing that this year. Mid upper 70s all around the area and temperatures are going to be staying pretty steady. Lots of clouds around this morning. The wind is going to be picking up. We'll start to see some sunshine squeezing through. We'll already be up in the mid and upper 80s by late morning. Wind picks up out of the uh, south primarily south to southeast and it is going to be on the breezy side today and then going for 97 for a high temperature. That would tie the record today here at the airport. And of course heat index readings are definitely something we do have to uh, keep in mind because because when you get up to right around 104, 105, your body just doesn't cool itself all that efficiently. So you really, really have to take it easy. Lots of shade. And again, like all the experts say, don't wait until you're thirsty. Just constantly hydrate. Lots of shade, all the rules that go along with it. 90 today at noon, partly sunny skies. And again, a high temperature today of 97. That would tie the record. The heat index is going to be up there close to 105 here in town, a lot higher, well down to the south. The next couple of days, we do have a small chance for a stray storm off to the west tomorrow late afternoon. I wouldn't get really excited about that. Looks like a disturbance wants to come across the river into some of our western counties. If you get some rain, consider yourself fortunate. Uh, it will not be as hot this week as it is now or was over the weekend, but still about 10 degrees above normal. Looks like a walk in the park, though, after this past yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> it's going to be a big cool down this week compared to <laughs> at 95. It's all about perspective. And but this still, weekend. yeah, the, the, and the humidity, the heat index, you know, still going to be up there. Yeah. So you still got to take it easy. Cool. We will. OK, thanks, Mike. 452, about 76 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, a look at which movies top the weekend box office. And here's a hint. The answer is not strange at all. Pick three numbers, 535, five, Fireball, zero, daily four, one, nine, six, one. Fireball 3. Cash 5, 22, 24, 25, 30, 31. Lotto, Texas, 1, 3, 26, 34, 36, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 4, 5, 6, 28, 67, Powerball 10, Power Play 2. Good luck. You opened the doorway between universes. We don't know who or what will walk through it. It's a massive $185 million domestic bow for Marvel's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's the biggest opening weekend of the year, the second biggest pandemic opening after Spider-Man No Way Home, and the 11th biggest North American opening of all time. Things just got out of hand. Add even higher overseas earnings, and Doctor Strange 2's global debut soars to $450 million. Bucks. Jody Whitaker made history five years ago when she was cast as the first female doctor in Doctor Who. Now, another historic first, 29-year-old sex education star Shuti Gatwa will succeed her as the show's first black doctor. Country star Mickey Gilly has died. He's best remembered for hits including Looking for Love and Room Full of Roses. Gilly was 86. And Billy Joel, 73 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News.
457, about 76 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, BMW is shipping some new cars without key features. We're going to show you why in your morning consumer news. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting at 76 degrees. When you walk out that door, you know the heat didn't leave for the week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, May 9th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend, and I hope that you were able to stay cool in some way. And a belated happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank hope, you. Hope you had a great Sunday. We did, but we stayed cool indoors for the most part. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What's the game plan for this week weather-wise, Mike Oster? Hey. Uh, still going to be very hot. Let me get my computer fired up right here. I think the heat got to it. I was having trouble starting right there. But, um, yeah, it's going to be, we'll still be about 10 degrees above normal all week long. It won't be as hot, so at least we get somewhat of a break. But, of course, yeah, the weekend was just miserably hot out there, of course, and we have got are all my uh, buttons pushed here and well, darn it all. I think that again, the heat I think got there we go. Oh, let me go back. OK, we'll try this again. Get all these little fancy little things going there. Yeah, there we go. All right, 77 degrees right now, 84% humidity, so a ton of humidity out there. The dew point stands at 72, which means, yeah, it's, you know, you get above 60, you feel it. You get above 70, and that's when it really, really uh, tends to be dangerous, especially down to the uh, in the southern counties later on today. 97 for high temperature, so we won't hit 100, but that's still going to tie the record in San Antonio from today's date. And the aquifer over the weekend did go up one-tenth of a foot, still in stage two water restrictions, of course, and the allergens, mold, moderate, grass, and pecan are both on the low side. So already this morning, we have a bit of a heat index. The actual air temperature is 77, obviously not a lot, but it feels like 78 degrees out there at the airport right now. And then you can add about Oh, anywhere from 25 close to 30 degrees to some of these numbers, and that's what it's going to be feeling like later on today. So cloudy, warm, and humid this morning. Then we'll see some sunshine later on today. Again, 97 ties the record. Heat index that's here in town, about 105. It is going to be on the breezy side as well. Now, tomorrow still stays hot maybe down a couple of notches. A stray storm out to the west is possible. I wouldn't get really excited about that. There's just a little bit of a kind of a disturbance glitch in the atmosphere moving on in here. Best way to describe it. Uh, so some folks off to the west may see a stray thunderstorm trying to pop up. And again, rest of the week is going to be hot, but not quite as hot. Now we still will have heat index readings today. Again, 105 low hundreds up to the uh, teens down to the south and we do have heat advisories posted for some of our southern counties. And even though again, there's not a heat advisory for most of the area, you definitely have to take it easy. Water, shade, and just limit your time outside as much as possible. All the details for the upcoming week in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, good morning, sir. Hot enough for you this weekend? Oh, yeah, it was triple digits. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roadways. Mike, uh, right now we aren't seeing anything that looks like it's a manic Monday right here. We're at US 90 at 36. You can see traffic is pretty light from these shots at Trans Guide I-10 at the Y. We're taking a look around town, and thankfully, no big problems to report just yet. But that's pretty normal around this time. We don't typically see a lot of drivers out on the roadways. So let's go ahead and show you the map because although we're seeing a lot of pavement here, we're also seeing a lot of green right here on the screen. You can see no slowdowns just yet, but that will likely change as the morning does roll on. But let's go ahead and check those travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City, the journey from Bernie right now is going to be a 25 minute drive time. I 10 eastbound, so just make sure to drive carefully there. 27 minutes if you're heading up to or heading down from 281 southbound and Bulverde and a 26 minute drive time on I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So it looks like we we are green across the board. No worries there. And as we get one last look at Transguide, we're not too worried over here in the traffic lap. However, we do have some road work that is still taking place. We're going to have all those details coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. An hours long standoff here in San Antonio ended with one man in custody. It's after the man barricaded himself inside his south side home on Sunday. Sarah Costa joins us live here in the studio with more Sarah. Good morning, Mark. That standoff lasted for six hours on the city's south side starting at 6 p.m. last night, not ending until midnight. So here's what we know about the situation. San Antonio police say they were called out to a home off of West South Cross. That's between Shelby and Buffalo Streets near Liao Middle School. Investigators tell us 
A man is accused of attacking a family member outside of that home, and then he reportedly went inside and barricaded himself inside for hours. No details were given on what led up to the assault or what exactly took place. However, it did lead up to members of the SWAT team being called out to help out with that situation. After six hours, police say the man came out peacefully and without incident. Police have not released the name of the suspect or the charges he'll be facing. We do know he was taken into custody after he walked out of the home he had barricaded himself in. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Mother's Day, not one in celebration for Saria Perez's family. The six-year-old was shot and killed at a car show exactly one year ago. Our family tells our Lee Waldman their pain is unimaginable, and they're vowing to make sure no other family goes through this. It looks like your average Mother's Day barbecue out in Elmendorf Park. We're taking it tough. For me, it started yesterday. For mom, it literally started at midnight. Aside from Soraya Perez's photo, looking across 24th Street at the gas station where she took her last breath in her mother Cassandra Mendoza's arms. It feels like just a few seconds ago, I was holding her in my arms, trying to bring her back. And I couldn't. One year ago, Soraya was at a car show with her family on Mother's Day when a fight broke out. And gunshots were fired, hitting her in the chest as the car she was in drove off. I refused to let any other child go through the tragedy we had to go through. Another family had to walk without a child the way we have to. In the year that's followed, her family has kept Soraya's name and memory alive through a 501c3 called Soraya Leanna's Blessings. We did a backpack, a back to school backpack give, uh, giveaway. We did um, a Thanksgiving plate and we nominated five families for Christmas. Today, their pain is palpable. Family holding on to one another just to keep it together breaks me every time because that's where she took her last breath in my arms. As Soraya's baby cousin and best friend holds on to her ashes, memories and love as the days tick by without her smile and laugh that held them together. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And Andrew Ray Elizondo is facing a felony murder charge in Soraya's death. If convicted, he could face 99 years in prison. Elizondo's next court date is on July 18th. Governor Greg Abbott will be in town again today as he campaigns for governor. He's scheduled to be at Pika Pika Plaza Event Center at 6 p.m. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke stopped by San Antonio last week. And now to the ultimate upset. You know, likely heard about the shocking results from the Kentucky Derby this weekend, but the stories of the two men behind the winning horse are also quite remarkable. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Rich Strike lived up to his name at the Kentucky Derby, becoming the second biggest long shot to ever win the race. At 80 to 1 odds, a $2 bet on Rich Strike would have made you $163. And when we turned for home, the, the rail opened up and we did it, my man. It's the first major win for 32-year-old jockey Sonny Leone. He had never ridden a horse that earned more than $251,000 for a race. The Kentucky Derby's winning purse, $1.86 million. We heard that the jockey actually raced here, so that was pretty interesting, and we've heard some people uh, win. Most of Leon's races have been in Youngstown, Ohio, where he's described as a hard worker. Everyone's super excited. A lot of our locals, a lot of our regulars that are familiar with him uh, bet on him to support him. Rich Strike's trainer, Eric Reed, also has a remarkable underdog story. Reed nearly walked away from the sport in 2013 when nearly two dozen of his horses died after lightning hit their barn. Reed told the Courier Journal, I just thought of all the years and all the stuff we had done to get this beautiful farm and have this happen, that something might be telling me it's the end of the line. I couldn't be happier. I got my father with me. My family's here. And this horse was special. The Preakness is the second leg of the Triple Crown. That race is May 21st, and Rich Strike has been invited. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
That was so fun to watch this week, and I spent hours watching kind of the pre-race activities oh, yeah? and then the uh, actual race itself. It, it didn't hit me till the very end that that was the alternate horse that had just basically showed up on Friday. Uh, last last minute. Yeah, last, very last minute. Yep, uh, a winning substitute. 509, about 76 degrees. And just ahead, a nearly billion dollar bond for Northside ISD, but there is some controversy this morning. That story is coming up. Back outside with a live cam, you know how this goes, right? You wake up to some morning clouds, a lot of humidity, temperatures in the mid 70s out there, maybe low 80s. But we're going to talk to Mike Coaster Age and see how this all plays out for the rest of your work week coming up. Welcome back. Just about 513, voters gave the green light for Northside ISD's nearly billion dollar bond. The money is meant to help renovate older schools in the district. However, now Governor Greg Abbott says the district may be under investigation after some questionable posts on social media. John Paul Braha spoke to the district's teachers union who says they are voiced similar concerns but also questioned the governor's motives. Northside AFT did endorse this bond. We know that the bond is important. Uh, we are glad this bond passed. I will say that we did bring some concerns to the attention of district leadership uh, on, on several occasions. Northside ISD's Teacher Federation's Chief of Staff, Melanie Espiritu Ozocat, explains, although they're pleased with the May 7 election results, on two to three occasions, they voiced concerns that staff were potentially pressured to go vote. Those same concerns were shared on Twitter in the form of alleged leaked emails. Governor Greg Abbott responded to that Twitter thread saying an investigation could happen, but admits those posts still need to be verified. Espiritu Osocard says Abbott is playing to his base. If Governor Abbott was truly concerned about public education, he would ensure that public education was properly and fully funded. Right now, he's just stirring his base, and this is political rhetoric yet again. Espiritu Osocard says the leak didn't come from them and is disappointed in how the emails are being portrayed on social media. As for their concerns, she directed us to NISD officials on how or if those were addressed. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Time right now, 514, 76 degrees. And it's an exciting time for gamers. We're going to show you which games are heading into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. Whoever you are, you have a style. And we want to help you own it. Because anyone can sell you clothes. We've got the brands the value and the inspiration you need so you can own your style. Allergies don't have to be scary. Spraying Flonase daily stops your body from overreacting to allergens all season long. Flonase, all good. In the Middle Ages, the remedy for tooth decay was to kiss a donkey. Hurry up! Today, there's a better way to help keep decay away. Act. With fortifying fluoride, it can make teeth up to four times stronger. Next. Act. Long live your teeth. In today's tech fights, the computer chip shortage strikes again. BMW is reportedly shipping some new vehicles without support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. After it changed chip suppliers, the chips in the cars will need updated software, which is expected by the end of next month. We're getting what appears to be a first look at the third generation Motorola Razr. Leaked images of an alleged testing model show a boxier design with the phone folding into a square when closed. It reportedly has two upgraded cameras and a fingerprint sensor on the power button. And Miss Pac-Man is now among gaming royalty. The iconic game is one of four inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. The Miss Pac-Man arcade game was released back in 1981. Joining her are the games Dance Dance Revolution, Sid Meier's Civilization, and Legend of Zelda. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. There's a rumor that Stephanie Cern is a Pac-Man queen. I am. Yeah. I can probably beat almost anyone in this room in Pac-Man only. That's the only this? game. Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Nice. It. Nice. That's it, though. <laughs> years of experience, right? Uh, yes, a lot yes. of years. <laughs> yeah, right. 518 right now. Let's check on Stephen Cavazos. Good morning. Hey, which Pac-Man was more successful, Pac-Man or Mrs. Pac-Man? Probably the original, but... 
Yeah, for a while you saw them both at the arcade. Uh, yeah, and I think it's Miz. I think she got an attorney. It wasn't Miz. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Maybe <laughs> PC, so yeah. All right, well, uh, let's take a look around the roadways and just change the subject right now. I-10 at Pro Band. We're not seeing any Pac-Mans out on the roadway, but we are seeing plenty of drivers that are getting their morning started early with us. Hopefully, grabbing that cup of coffee. Let's take that drive around town. 35 upper level there. Doesn't really show a whole lot of traffic. Last week, we saw a few more folks out on the roadway during the early hours of the morning, but looks like we are just seeing some calm roads right now. Uh, but be on the lookout. There's a few things that are happening that we want you to be alert of. Uh, notice here there was a little bit of a slowdown off of 410 getting on to 35. Doesn't look like it's causing any issues anymore, but we are seeing a stalled vehicle right there off of Loop 410 near State Highway 151. It's in the southbound lanes, but the northbound lanes is where we're also seeing a slowdown. So we want our drivers to be prepared. Make sure you plan your commute as well, because there is going to be some column work taking place here off Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Now keep in mind, this is current and should be wrapping up on Saturday, May 14th. It is an overnight uh, construction process, so we'll be seeing that closure from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. You can expect the full alternating closure of the Glebra Road intersection. And of course, it's that time. Open your camera app on your phone and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that should have the latest on anything that could be impacting your commute. Of course, the latest on closures as well. So just again, open your camera app and scan that QR code. That'll take you right there, guys. Stevie, you know it would be cool mm. on a no traffic day yeah. if you had a Pac Man icon like a long 1604 just chumping away. <laughs> see if, any, <laughs> see if <laughs> anybody <laughs> notices. Oh, yeah. I mean, right? yeah maybe yeah. it'll reduce the traffic and congestion uh, over anything there. Anything that'll right? help. And all I can think about was Wayne's World. Remember what? when they interviewed the guy with oh. the arc from the arcade? So what's the difference between Ms. Pac-Man and Pac-Man? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Forgot all about that. I did too. Wasn't that Bill Murray's brother, Brian Doyle yeah. Murray? Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, we got to think of something to take our mind off the heat around here. Beautiful shot of the moon from the other night, and it is at the first quarter stage right now. Full moon is going to be a week from today. It, of course, is the waxing gibbous. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Plenty of uh Clouds, plenty of humidity this morning. Temperatures are in the mid and upper 70s. We are anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal right now. And there is a slight bit of a heat index in places. It feels like 83 at Stinson, 78 out there at the airport. Same thing with Port SA and heat index. Of course, that's what it actually feels like to your body. That's going to definitely be an issue today. It was an issue yesterday and really the next couple of days. We've got a decent breeze out of the southeast, 10, uh, close to 15 miles per hour. At times, it is going to be breezy today, and all that's doing is just pumping in more humidity. So temperatures will be staying in the mid 70s. This morning, we'll start to see some sunshine as the morning rolls on and already make it into the upper 80s by 11 o'clock. I mean, the normal high temperature this time of year is in the mid 80s, 84 degrees. So we'll already be up to 90 today at noon and then top off at 97. So won't hit 100, but of course, it is definitely going to be feeling like that. Heat index readings 105, 104, up to close to 112 in Catula. And so again, Got to emphasize how your body just does not cool itself that efficiently when you get above 105. All right, jump ahead to tomorrow and there don't get really excited about this, but there is a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. There's a disturbance trying to move in here off the mountains of Mexico, and that may work its way into some of our western counties as we go into tomorrow night. And some of those storms, if indeed they do pop up, could be on the potentially strong side, some high winds and maybe uh, some hail. There's already that uh, very small risk for an isolated severe storm well out to the west, and that would be tomorrow night. It's unlikely that they hold together and move any further off to the east, but at least there's hope. And I wouldn't get really excited about that right now, but at least there is that small chance out there. 90 at noon today, partly sunny skies, and then a high temperature again makes it up to 97. That would also tie the record today. Heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds and even the teens, 100 teens down to the south. Tomorrow, other than that stray storm off to the west, it's still going to be hot. It will still be roughly 10 degrees above normal the rest of the week. Not obviously as hot. We'll still be dealing with uh, some of that heat index out there. And after tomorrow, I mean, that small chance of rain right now, there's just nothing out there as far as any rain chances even going in through this weekend. Hmm. Well, Hopefully later. It is what it is. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Four or five, rather, 23, 523. Yeah, 76 degrees. Yeah, Elizabeth Olsen talks about her strange role. That's next in your morning spotlight news. Then what are you here for? 
I need your help. It's no big surprise that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was number one at the weekend box office, pulling in a magical $185 million in ticket sales. For Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Wanda Maximoff, it was a chance to revisit a complex character. I felt very grateful for the lane I took up in the Avengers franchise. WandaVision created a whole new opportunity for me. Um, and also for me as an actor to just play like that. I mean, I, I really love my job and getting to do so many different genres of it in one project was amazing. Is that my mac and cheese? It was over the line. Here we go. And the big winner is Mac and Cheese. The short film won three awards at the 2022 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. This year's theme focused on folks with superhero capabilities and our Mac and Cheese lover can time travel. The short won Best Film, Best Director, and Best Editor. In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Stanford. 27 about 76 degrees and just ahead at 530 San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after an overnight shooting Katrina Weber is standing by with the latest back outside with live cam if you're just now joining us pretty typical Monday morning we've got some clouds and tons of humidity we'll see if we're going to break any temperature records this week or if there is a shot at some rain or storms. Welcome back. It is 530 on your Monday, May 9th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a nice weekend, a nice hot weekend, and today that heat will kind of continue. Mike Osterhage is here with more. Okay, give it to us straight, Mike. Hot. Thank you, Mike. Just look at traffic right now. <laughs> yeah, we hit 100, of course, both days over the weekend, uh, which is the earliest we've ever hit two consecutive triple-digit temperatures. Just top the old record by a couple of days. Uh, 77 right now. That's actually hotter than the highest or low temperature that we see the hottest uh, time of the year for low temperatures in the uh, first couple of weeks of August. Dew point stands at 72, a ton of humidity out there, wind out of the southeast. So we do actually have a slight bit of a heat index right now. 78 here in town port is a right now at Stinson. It feels like 83 degrees. Yeah, you walk outside and you just want to turn around and go back inside. We're going to have heat index readings later on today. 104, 105 here in town um, in the northern half of the area, up around 100 and then down uh, 110 and higher down to the south. And there are heat advisories posted for our southern counties from Catula over toward Beeville and south of there from one o'clock up until eight o'clock. And even if you don't have an actual, you know, an official heat advisory in your area, you definitely have to take it easy. Lots of shade, lots of water, if at all possible. Molds on the moderate side, grass and pecan are low and throughout the the day we're going to be up to 90 already at noon again just to put it in perspective at 10 o'clock we'll be right around the normal high temperature this time of year we make it up to 97 that's going to tie the record uh, for today and throughout the next couple of days we're still going to be hot not as hot and maybe just maybe a stray shower thunderstorm out to the west tomorrow more on that in just a couple of minutes traffic authority steve cavazos what's going on sir hey good morning mike 532 uh, we are seeing some progress here at us 90 at 410 we saw some flashing lights out there a little bit earlier but let's get that wide look at trans guide because now what we're seeing is uh, somewhat some easy trans traffic moving through there. There were flashing lights indicating that there was some road work still taking place. This is overnight. Our friends over at Transguide giving us a wider view. So although it did look like it wrapped, we see here that we still have some crews out there working to clear that up. So make sure that you give them plenty of room and make sure you give yourself plenty of time. But thankfully, no big problems to talk about just yet. However, be on the lookout because stalls are popping up. This one is the latest that TxDOT is reporting off of I-10 eastbound right there at Vance Jackson Road. So if you have to make a drive down to the San Antonio area downtown area I should say you will likely encounter that stall so make sure you follow the rules of the road that's move over or slow down let's go ahead and show you that wide look at the metro area 533 again no big problems to report but you see here a crash did pop up off of I-37 so it won't impact traffic at least on the highways but we'll find out exactly what's causing that and, and how long that could impact the driver's commute in that area but nothing's really going to be causing any delays if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities 29 minutes pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound, 21 minutes if you are heading on 87 northbound from Lavernia and a 28-minute drive time from Flotusville. So looking pretty good there. And again, we'll hopefully see this wrap up, but keep in mind there are still a few road uh, workers out there at US 90 at 410. We'll have more updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. 
Breaking news this morning, the time for last call at a bar near downtown instead brought a call for help. San Antonio police say a man showed up at that bar overnight after he was shot. Katrina Weber is live where police believe the shooting actually happened at a parking lot near North Main and West Park Avenue. Katrina, do they have any idea what led to it? Well, police told us that they are investigating this as a possible robbery. Now, we can tell by looking at the side of this building, that logo right there, that this is the property of the Alamo College's district. In fact, we're not that far from San Antonio College. What we don't know yet, though, is whether the victim was, in fact, a student from, the, from San Antonio College. Police described him only as a man in his 20s. They say he showed up at the Heat Bar in the 1500 block of North Main with a gunshot wound in his leg. That man told police he went there for help right after the shooting, which happened around 1.30 this morning. The victim told officers he was in this parking garage when three men dressed all in black and wearing masks approached him. Again, police believe that they had robbery in mind, but they did not say whether those men actually stole anything from the victim. He was taken to a hospital for treatment and should be okay. The masked men did get away. And as far as we know, police have not found them yet. Now, since we've been out here, we have noticed a police presence in the form of the Alamo College's police department. We've seen officers drive by and definitely make their presence known here. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Other stories we are following this morning. The battle over abortion rights appears to be headed to the Senate floor. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced Sunday he'll be putting a bill to codify Roe versus Wade up for a vote later this week. Democrats are hoping they can preserve abortion rights that way. CNN's John Lawrence reports. On Sunday, which was Mother's Day, dozens of women in Kansas City protested in support of Roe v. Wade. Once they take away abortion, they're going to take away uh, birth control. I mean, who knows what comes next? It's a slippery slope. Over two Senate decades. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he plans to file a motion for a procedural vote Monday, which could see a full Senate vote on the controversial issue Wednesday. I think Roe v. Wade created a constitutional right that doesn't exist in the written Constitution. It's created division from its, the first day it was decided until now. The Women's Health Protection Act bill to codify Roe, pushed by Schumer and other Senate Democrats, would need at least 10 Republican votes to overcome a GOP filibuster. Hitting that threshold is unlikely. If America's people, America's women and men who love them do not fight right now, we will lose the basic right to make decisions, to have bodily autonomy and to decide what our futures look like. 13 states have so-called trigger laws, which would quickly ban abortion if Roe is overturned. One of those states is Mississippi, and its governor, Tate Reeves, says ending Roe would be a big win for abortion opponents. We're trying to provide those uh, potential expectant mothers uh, the resources that they need so that they, they can go to a full term of pregnancy. If they choose to keep that child, then, then that's a, a great outcome. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, it's happening again. Gas prices going back up, and this morning drivers could see a record level of pain at the pump to begin the work week. Sarah Costa joins us live in studio to break down these prices. Here we go again, Sarah. I know. I filled up. I did not like the price I saw, the total there yesterday. So today, gas prices are within striking distance of yet another record high just ahead of the summer driving season. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of regular gas is now $4.32. That's up 18 cents from last month and one cent below the all time high, which was set back on March 11th. So some analysts predict an average price as high as 450 a gallon by the summer and the cost of diesel fuel soared to another all time high this weekend at 553 a gallon on average. Fuel prices are being pushed higher by increasing demand and rising oil prices due to concern about less Russian oil entering the global market. And oil prices are expected to rise even higher once cities in China lift their COVID-19 lockdowns. But our gas prices locally aren't as high as a national average. AAA has listed the average price per gallon in Texas at $3.99. The highest it's been in Texas was at $4 back on March 11th. Here in San Antonio, the listed average today is $3.93 a gallon. A year ago this time, we were paying $2.53 a gallon. Mark and Stephanie. Ouch. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah. 538, 76 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, a look at some of the stories trending right now on KSA.com.
Outside with live cam right now, 76 degrees at the airport, as we said. Lots of humidity kind of hanging around right now. At least we're done with oak season, right? There's the blessing. We'll be right back. Trending now on our website, Texas homeowners will get a slight break on their property tax bills. This comes after Texas voters overwhelmingly passed a pair of statewide ballot measures on Saturday. Voters approved two propositions to lower property taxes for homeowners, one aimed at older and disabled Texans, and another that would provide modest relief for homeowners across the board. Also on KSET.com, students graduating from a historically black college in East Texas are getting their tuition paid off by an anonymous donor. Wiley College says over 100 students were gathered for graduation on Saturday when the school's president made the announcement. The estimated balance for the graduating class was around $300,000. Well, that's a heck of a commencement surprise, yes, right? Yes, it is. A very nice surprise. Oh, fantastic. 542, about 76 degrees. A lot of seniors are getting ready to graduate, and while choosing a major may be easy, paying for college is a different story. Just ahead, who's stepping up to help local students? Good morning. Yes, there are drafts in place, and here's the thing. If the initial draft is passed, that map would shift the boundaries of almost every city council district. Now, Ileana joined us. We talked about a lot. We talked about the importance of representation, equity, and community. Here's a bit of our conversation. One of the most valuable and precious rights we're guaranteed through the U.S. Constitution is the right to representation, right? Many of us went to the polls, whether it was early voting, uh, as you guys previously talked about, or yesterday, um, that's what it comes down to, right? So that my vote, where I am, uh, whether I'm voting, uh, here we're talking about city council, but whether I'm voting for a congressional leader or um, a state representative, it matters as much as the person living in a different uh, or neighboring district. We also talked about the advisory committee, why it is so important, and how you can get involved. You can find all of this information, including the meeting times and dates of the conversations, and you can check out the full conversation, full discussion right now. Just head to ksat.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'll see you next Sunday. Student loan borrowers have at least a few additional months of relief now that payments are paused through August. And right now, U.S. borrowers owe $1.7 trillion in student loans, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. But as KSAT producer Alexis Page explains, one local school district is trying to help students avoid adding to the growing national debt. Choosing a major for college can be easy. I'm majoring in biology in order to pursue uh, my doctorate degree. I'm going to go to college to major in nursing. But paying for college can be a challenge, especially for those who are the first in their family to go to college, like East Central High School senior Jahatsi Ramos. You know, coming to another different state, it's just there's a lot of obstacles that you have to overcome. Millions of Americans are still paying off their student loans years after graduating. Amanda Holman is the director of College Career and Military Readiness for East Central ISD. She says the district takes extra steps to make sure high school seniors are informed about their options so they won't be in a similar situation. We really encourage our students to, um, you know, educate themselves on loans and what uh, that means for them and what that means for their futures when they take out student loans. East Central hosts information sessions both in person and online where students and parents can learn about the free application for federal student aid, the Texas application for state financial aid, along with the Alamo Promise, a San Antonio based tuition free program. Senior Ladarian Franklin says it creates a smooth process to figuring out his plans. They helped me get all my college applications in FAFSA and just helped me with everything my parents didn't know how to help me with. Because a lot of families are under the impression that, number one, if they fill out a FAFSA or TASFA, that they automatically have to take out loans, um, and that's not the case. And so uh, we try to, to dispel that myth. The district also has a central location where students can get help. The Go Center, which is actually located at East Central High School. It helps you with like your transcripts, um, your GPA, and technically overall, like going to college. It actually provides um, the Texas Success Initiative or TSI testing for students so that they can be considered college ready when they leave us. Seniors say it helps take the pressure off so they can focus on making their parents proud. I'm doing things they couldn't and I'm um, continuing our name through them. I think that's something that allows me to keep moving forward. Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News.
All right, let's see if we can keep our TASFA and our FAFSA straight here. Something new for the 2021-22 school year. Texas House passed HB3, which requires high school seniors to complete and submit the FAFSA. Along with the TASFA for any students who do not have a U.S. Social Security number. However, students are also able to sign a form to opt out. Let's check traffic. Uh, folks have to head work. Cannot opt out of the morning commute, <laughs> can they? <laughs> not just yet. I, uh, not at all, actually. You know, Monday morning is moving. Thanks, Mark Stuff. Let's get that look around town. 410 at Jackson Keller. Yeah, things are moving. You are not going to be able to avoid any traffic, but thankfully, if you have to hit the roads in the next few moments, you're not really going to encounter a whole lot, but be on the lookout because we are seeing stalls. We told you about this one, Y10 eastbound at Vance Jackson Road, but we have a few more that we're adding to our list. Let's take a drive over here where we see another one off State Highway 151 westbound on Military Drive. Now, this stall is not causing any issue, but we also see another stall. Uh, drive over here does show one detected off of I-10 eastbound at ProBamp. So you can see that's a trending issue right now. We want our drivers to make sure they check their vehicles before they hit the roadways. And, of course, make sure that you are courteous whenever you see those stranded drivers on the side of the road. And make sure you plan your commute because we still have some road work going on. Rail work, actually, off Wurzbach Parkway. Keep in mind, this is current and should be wrapping up on Sat Friday, May 27th. So we still have have some days to go before this actually finishes. Keep in mind that is going to be taking place at 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. There is going to be a single lane closure in both directions from Northwest Military Highway there to Blanco Road. Again, that's for some rail work at Wurzbach Parkway. But of course, that information is on KSAT.com slash traffic. But back here on Trans Guide, the morning is moving and things are looking good. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Mark said this looks like a Dr. Seuss flower. It's nice. Okay. <laughs> Steph, are you going to join me up here because this matches your, your <laughs> my dress purple so well dress and, your shoes? and my purple shoes? <laughs> it's exact color of her shoes right now. No. Well, I don't know if it'll come out. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Though. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT <laughs> Connect picture. And as far as far as your flowers and and yards and everything else, of course, we are in stage two watering restrictions, but uh, they do need some water because we. Basically, don't have anything in the forecast as far as rain. Maybe a small chance out west tomorrow. More on that in a second. Temperatures throughout the rest of today. We're going to be staying steady. We're in the 70s right now. Basically, mid and upper 70s around the area. And we'll make it up into the low to mid 80s mid-morning. And then upper 80s by 11 o'clock. 90 already at noon. Right around 10 o'clock, that is the average normal low temperature, 85 degrees. So we're going to be obviously way above that later on today. 97 for a high. It is going to be windy. Winds out of the south to southeast at 10, 20 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. 97 is going to be tying the record today. And as far as the humidity, it's very, very high this morning. Yes, it will be dropping down somewhat going through that 24-hour cycle. Uh, we're still above the threshold line of 60 right here. And even though the humidity does drop out, down somewhat. We are going to be dealing with heat index readings about 104, 105 throughout much of the area in the southern half of the area and then even hotter than that. And so that's why there are heat advisories for some of our southern counties. All right, going into tomorrow, there is, like I said, the small chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms to pop up out to the west. There's a disturbance tomorrow evening that's going to try and come in here from the mountains of Mexico into some of our western counties could have a couple of stronger thunderstorms. There is that potential. It does not look like a lot of those are going to be tr able to work their way further off to the east, although uh, we do obviously have to keep an eye on this thing because sometimes these storm complexes at night sort of uh, be get a mind of their own, if you will, and hold together in the overnight hours, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but doesn't look like it as of right now. However, we do have that risk, just an isolated, uh, potentially strong or severe storm out to the west tomorrow, and that would be for tomorrow evening. High winds and hail would be the, the biggest threats with that. Other than that, nothing as far as any rain in the uh, forecast all the way through the rest of the week. 90 at noon today, partly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 97. Again, that's going to tie the record today. So that would be two records. Saturday, we set a record. Today, we tie a record. We almost hit it yesterday. Of course, those two triple digit days in a row. 95 tomorrow. We will see a slight drop in temperatures, slight being the operative word. I mean, we'll take 94 over 100 any day, but mm -hmm. those numbers are still roughly 10 degrees above normal and same thing around the, the low end of the scale. We'll have a lot of morning clouds and afternoon sunshine. Still hot though. Still hot. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 553, 76 degrees. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide. There is a look there at Highway 281 in Hildebrand. Now Highway 90 at Zarzamora. We'll be right back.
everything everywhere all at once held on to fifth place this weekend with $3.3 million, while Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore fell from third to fourth place with $4 million. Downshifting from second to third place was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which made $6.2 million. Just ahead of it was former box office champ The Bad Guys with $9.8 million, bringing its North American box office total to $57.6 million. You didn't need to have Doctor Strange's powers to foresee his new movie would win the weekend. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness conjured up $185 million, which makes it the 11th biggest opening in domestic box office history and the biggest debut of 2022. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including this huge landslide caught on camera in the state of Alaska. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And we'll have details on an hours long standoff in San Antonio's South Side that ended with one man in custody. Sarah Costa will bring us the very latest. All eyes on Russia as it marks a military holiday with possible consequences for Ukraine. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on that and a new round of sanctions on Russia coming up. And leaked photos showing the design of Motorola's new Razor phone. We'll take a look at the specs. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, still kind of humid out there. Uh, we haven't got away from the heat just yet. We're going to check in with Mike very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hope you had an awesome Mother's Day weekend. It was a steamer around here. It is Monday, May 9th. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it was a very hot weekend, but nice. We'll see if anything changes this week at all. And Mike Ostrich's face will tell us the whole story. Still going to be hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we hit 100, of course, on Saturday, 101, both days, set the record on Saturday, the earliest we've ever had two uh, consecutive triple digit days here at the uh, at officially out at uh, San Antonio International Airport. Today, we will not hit 100 here in town. Uh, we're still going to be tying a record, though, getting up to 97. Lots of clouds and uh, I don't know. It just looks like you can see the humidity in this picture because it is definitely humid out there. Humid enough to give us a heat index right now. Temperature is 77. It feels like 78, 83 is the heat index right now at Stinson. And even though we get somewhat of an afternoon drop in the humidity in the usual 24 hour cycle, we're still going to have these heat index readings getting well up uh, 105, 110 higher than that, especially down to the south and down to the south. We do have a heat advisory it goes into effect at one o'clock up until eight o'clock. And even if if there's not a formal heat advisory posted for your area, obviously just take it easy. Watch the pets, watch yourself. Lots of water, lots of shade. Molds on the moderate side, grass, pecan are on the low side and throughout the rest of today. Temperatures are pretty much going to be steady this morning and we'll have a lot of clouds, then some sunshine later on to, uh, later on this afternoon mixed in partly cloudy skies. 90 already at noon. Wind out of the southeast, 10, 20 miles per hour, kind of gusty, about 25, close to 30 miles per hour at times, and then 97 for high temperature. Again, that will tie the record for today. Now, it's not going to be as hot the rest of the week, still about 10 degrees above normal, but not quite as hot. Maybe a stray thunderstorm or two well out to the west tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Hadn't been too much going on this morning so far. Is yeah, that still the case? It's been a good start to the week, Mike. Uh, good start to the week for me and a great start to the week for these drivers. I-10 at the Y. We have a great shot from our friends over at TransGuide, which really doesn't show a lot of activity now that uh, we are inching closer to 6 a.m. Uh, morning rush hour. Thankfully, no need to rush out the door. We're seeing that traffic is moving through there without any trouble. But the main problem that we've really been seeing this morning are those pesky stalls are still out there. So let's go ahead and show you the map because uh, we told you about this one off State Highway 151 West and a military drive that's still being reported by TechStop, but we are adding another one to the list. Let's take a big drive over in the opposite direction near the northeast side. They're off Loop 410 in the south northbound lanes at Austin Highway. So again, that, that seems to be the problem right now. We haven't really been seeing a whole lot of issues in terms of congestion, crashes, or anything else. But as we get that wide look at the map, we want our drivers to remind themselves, or we want to remind drivers, that is, just take it easy this morning. There's not going to be any need to rush, at least at this hour. You're 
if your destination is the Alamo City, well, you're in luck. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 37 northbound, 28 minute drive time to the Alamo City downtown area, 19 minutes on Highway 90 coming in from Castroville in those eastbound lanes, and we're looking at 16 minutes coming in from Lytle. So just remember to take it easy out on the roadways. Of course, although we do have those stalls, we know that there is still some road work taking place. We'll tell you, we'll tell you where that's happening coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man's in the hospital after a scary scene near downtown. It's all unfolding around 1.30 this morning. Police say a man in his 20s was in a parking garage on West Avenue near San Antonio College when he was approached by three men all wearing masks. Officers say they may have been trying to rob him. The victim ended up getting shot in the leg but was able to run to a nearby bar to call for help. At this time, no arrests have been made. An hours long standoff here in San Antonio ended with one man in custody. This after a man barricaded inside a Southside home on Sunday. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the very latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. This standoff lasted for six hours in the city's south side starting at 6 p.m. last night, not ending until midnight. So here's what we know about the situation. San Antonio police say they were called out to a home off of West South Cross between Shelby and Buffalo Streets. That's near Leal Middle School. Investigators tell us a man is accused of attacking a family member outside. Then he reportedly went inside and barricaded himself inside that home for hours. No details were given on what led up to the assault or what exactly took place. However, it did lead up to members of the SWAT team having to be called out to help out with the situation. After six hours, police say the man came out peacefully and without incident. Police have not released the name of the suspect or the charges he will face. We do know he was taken into custody after the, he walked out of the home that he had barricaded himself in. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. An update now on that shooting up in Round Rock, North Austin, that forced a neighborhood to shelter in place. Police identified the suspect as 31 year Harry Tolentino, who is from Round Rock. Investigators say he's accused of shooting a neighbor before running down the street in a black trench coat armed with an AK-47. Round Rock police later caught up with Tolentino and exchanged gunfire with him. He was found dead in a wooded area, but it's still not clear if he took his own life or was killed by police gunfire. The neighbor who was shot was taken to a hospital. Extreme fire danger in northern New Mexico. The flames have already burned an area larger than Chicago, and firefighters are struggling to contain the flames. Our crews are working around the clock to try and stay ahead of what the National Weather Service is calling a potentially historic critical fire weather event. The fire has been burning for more than a month and has forced 12,000 families from their homes. This morning, the world is watching Russia. The country now facing new sanctions that observes Victory Day, commemorating the Russian victory over Nazi Germany during World War II. Today's military holiday also being closely examined for signs of Russia's next steps in Ukraine. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest. Good morning. With all eyes on Russia and President Putin among today's top questions, how will he direct troops going forward? Addressing crowds today, he called military action in Ukraine a preemptive move against aggression. Today marks Victory Day in Russia and uncertainty in Ukraine. Russia revering its military and World War II era win over Nazi Germany war-torn Ukraine closely watching President Putin's address to his people and the world. In advance of Victory Day, President Biden and G7 leaders sent out new sanctions, saying Vladimir Putin's actions bring shame on Russia and the historic sacrifices of its people. Ukrainian officials releasing this video, the aftermath of a Russian bombing of a school in the Luhansk region where dozens were hiding, at least 60 people feared dead. At the holdout Azovstal steel complex in Mariupol, the last remaining civilians have reportedly escaped. High profile support from the West. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden holding a Mother's Day meeting with Ukraine's First Lady and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Kyiv in a meeting with President Zelensky pledging continued support. U.S. diplomats were also in Kyiv over the weekend ahead of plans to resume operations soon. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And topping your morning consumer news, new warnings about potential power problems across the country. Operators of electric grids in states like Indiana, California, and here in Texas, all saying that power generation is struggling to keep up with demand, and that could lead to rolling blackouts during periods of high demand as soon as the summer. 
And job hunters still have a lot of choices nationwide. The Labor Department says employers added 428,000 jobs last month. The unemployment rate sticking at 3.6%. The tight labor market also creating more opportunities for teens to cash in. Unemployment among 16 to 19 year olds is 10.2%, just above a 68 year low. Teens now working at greater numbers than they have since before the 2008 financial crisis. Computer chip shortage strikes again. BMW reportedly shipping some new vehicles without support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay after it changed chip suppliers. The chips in the cars will need updated software, which is expected to happen by the end of next month. And finally, we are getting what appears to be a first look at the third generation Motorola Razr. Leaked images of an alleged testing model show a boxier design with the phone folding into a square when closed. It reportedly has two upgraded cameras and a fingerprint sensor on the power button. 609, about 76 degrees. And much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including the absolute stunner at the Kentucky Derby. We're going to have a recap. And just to hit the cost of keeping your car on the road is going up again. We'll have the latest on rising gas prices. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It's still early, but what can I say? A little warm, a little humid out there. Be prepared. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 613 and it's happening again. Gas prices are going up and this morning drivers could see a record level of pain at the pump to begin the work week. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. Today, gas prices are within striking distance of yet another record high just ahead of the summer driving season. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of regular is now $4.32, up 18 cents from last month and one cent below the all-time high set on March 11th. Some analysts predict an average price as high as $4.50 a gallon by summer. And the cost of diesel fuel soared to another all-time high this weekend, $5.53 a gallon on average. In New England, some truck drivers are paying $3.50 more per gallon of diesel compared to last year. Yesterday was the first time I ever filled my truck up and I hit a thousand over a thousand dollars. Fuel prices are being pushed higher by increasing demand and rising oil prices due to concern about less Russian oil entering the global market. And oil prices are expected to rise even higher when cities in China lift their COVID lockdowns. China is a very large oil consumer. So if China shuts down some of these big cities, that could mean lower demand and it could mean lower price, just depending on how long these cities are shut down. Meanwhile, stock futures fell overnight on Wall Street. A turbulent week ended Friday with the market's fifth consecutive weekly decline. But there is one bright spot ahead of a key inflation report this Wednesday. A leading research firm says, quote, we expect inflation to peak this summer between 6 and 7 percent and to recede to 3 to 4 percent next year with no recession, adding we may have spotted the first signs of peaking inflation already. That key report on Wednesday is expected to show the rate of inflation last month was below the 8.5 percent rate we saw in March, a signal that inflation has finally peaked. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. It is exactly 615. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen at Last Check. Well, the road has looked okay out there so far. Yeah, it's been pretty nice so far, but uh, let's get a look around town, see how the morning is shaping up. There's US 90 at 36, I-10 at the Y. Uh, only difference now is that we are seeing just maybe a few more folks out there at this hour. I-10 at Presa, so just remember, take it easy. I uh, do want to bring your attention to the map because we have been talking about this stall here off State Highway 151 westbound. Uh, that's what TxDOT has reported. However, our map is picking that up as a crash. We'll talk to our friends over there, find out exactly what they're seeing, but just remember to be cautious and be alert whenever you see those flashing lights. Let's take a wide jump over here because we still have this stall off 34, pardon me, 410 northbound right there at Austin Highway. So that seems to be the trending trouble right now. I would say those stalled vehicles, but the wide look at the map doesn't show any other problems that we are seeing or detecting. So you're in luck right now, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. But just remember, plan your commute. Just as a quick reminder, loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. There is some column work that will continue at least up until Saturday. That's May 14th. It's overnight, 8 
in the evening to 5 in the morning. You can expect a full alternating closure of the Culebra Road intersection. And as always, grab those phones, open the camera app, scan that QR code. It takes about maybe two to three seconds. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that will have the latest on those closures and anything that could be impacting your morning drive time. But right now, things look pretty good. Thank you, Stephen. You know, you know, Friday is, by the way, you mentioned the 14th on Saturday, yeah. Friday the 13th coming up. Oh, yeah, I saw week? that today. Oh, yeah, you're right. It lines up that way. Hmm. It'll be uh, an interesting day. Always at least one every year. Yes. Thank goodness. Yeah. No, and, and <laughs> no more Friday than three in a year. So. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. <laughs> You can share that little tidbit with your friends. Just something to keep your mind off the heat. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. So somebody mentions the heat, just say, you know, there's Friday the 13th coming up. Change the subject. 75 degrees this morning, and we do have somewhat of a heat index already with that very high humidity. It is sultry out there, uh, especially, say, down around Stinson. Your windows are probably dripping. Your eyeglass is going to fog up if you go from air conditioning outside. 97 for a high temperature today. That would tie the record for today's date. And again, that heat index then later on this afternoon is going to be up around 105 here in town. We're going to have a wind out of the southeast at 10, 20 miles per hour, kind of on the gusty side. Here's a look at lots of clouds and it just looks hot and humid out there as of right now. And a lot of folks were seeing this picture yesterday. Look at that thermometer. That's even in the shade about what is that 115 down there around a Poteet. Yeah, it's going to be extremely hot all around the area with those very high heat index readings. And of course, the average first uh, 100 degree reading in San Antonio is June 26th. So we're obviously way above average. And the earliest, of course, was back in 1996. Last year was the latest in a year that we actually hit 100. We didn't hit it until uh, September 6th, but then there have been many years, matter of fact, 23 of them, with no 100 degree days officially out there at the airport. The last time around was 2007. Now, of course, this weekend we did hit it twice, both Saturday and Sunday, 101. That was a record on Saturday, and that's the earliest that we've had two consecutive 100 degree days. Previous was the 11th and 12th of the month back in 1967. And of course, back in 2009, that was the record setting year 59 days at 100 degrees, 57 in 2011 and 2013, 41. Hopefully, we don't uh, do that. Maybe it's going to be a cold summer after hitting 100 this early. Y'all think? Mark, Mark, yeah. really? No, I doubt it. <laughs> Sorry. I can wish for the lottery. We can, yeah, we yeah, definitely we, can. I like your thinking. Lottery too. 84 at 10 o'clock this morning. So by 10 o'clock, we're already going to be up to what is the normal high temperature. 90 today at noon. We'll see more sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today. And then 97 for a high temperature. As far as the heat index, we're going to be seeing 110 or higher than that down to the south. And that's prompting heat advisories down to the south. Jump ahead to tomorrow and a couple of showers and thunderstorms they try and pop up well off there to the west uh, there's a little bit of a disturbance sliding on in here i wouldn't get really excited about this off to the west you do have that that chance but a lot of times these things will be dying down and this would be tomorrow evening there is that small chance for a couple of those and just an isolated strong to potentially severe storm out there to the west other than that that's it as far as rain chances as of right now for at least the next week. 90 at noon today, partly sunny skies, and then a high temperature up to 97. Again, ties the record, 105 heat index here in town. It won't be as hot the rest of the week compared to obviously what we had over the weekend. No more triple digits this week at the airport officially, uh, but it's still going to be 10 degrees above normal on average. Breezy the next few days. That won't stray storm or two off to the west tomorrow. So yeah, maybe it'll be a cold summer since we hit 100. Maybe, maybe. That would be nice. Um, I mean, if everybody on the planet crosses their fingers, maybe. In unison. In unison. Yes. Okay. Again, this is why I played the lottery. Maybe it'll be a cold summer. So. All right. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Mike. You, Mike. Don't go to Vegas with me. Okay. <laughs> thank you, sir. Coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, your book's a big part of the end of the school year, of course, especially for high school graduates. However, one high school is making their yearbook unique for students who are visually impaired. We're going to show you these one-of-a-kind books at 9 a.m. that will hold lasting memories for the students. We'll be right back. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with Rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with Rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with Rebelsis. A1C down with Rebelsis. In a clinical study, once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. 
Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may work some kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down. Ask your healthcare provider about Rebelsis today. Just about 624, new details expected today and that the death of three Americans at a resort in the Bahamas. ABC's Will Reeve has details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in paradise. It definitely gives me a cause for concern just because you want to know what happened. New details emerging as investigators try to piece together what caused three mysterious deaths at the luxury Sandals Emerald Bay Resort on Great Exuma in the Bahamas. Three individuals were found dead on a hotel property with one individual still alive. Authorities say the cause is still under investigation, but they don't suspect foul play. Local business owner Thomasina Ferguson, who runs a restaurant just down the street from Sandals, telling GMA about the uncertainty in the Everything area. Everything is a hush hush. Everyone is just waiting on the coroner's report. Everything has been hush hush. It's not much talk about it. And we'll have much more on this unfolding mystery with a live report from the Bahamas coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Great Exuma, Bahamas. Time now, 625 and 76 degrees for now. Coming up next half hour, we have the very latest on an overnight stabbing incident on the city's northwest side. We'll tell you what we know so far. And last week on GMSA, we showed you what it's like for those who are in basic military training. Just ahead at 630, we're going to take a look at the end of that journey, graduation day. And Transguide right now, quite a few cars on the road at 410 and Ingram Road. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos and see how things are looking as we approach the bottom of the hour. police are investigating a shooting that they say may have started as a robbery in this parking garage. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Caught on camera, a huge landslide cascades across an Alaskan roadway. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And one of the biggest upsets in sports history. We're going to tell you about the shocker at the Kentucky Derby. So fun to watch. Uh, not fun this morning if you uh, dislike humidity. We're back to normal around here after a record or near record weekend as far as high temperatures. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday the 9th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a, a nice weekend and I hope you found some way to keep cool. It got really, really hot. How's the week looking, Mike Osterhage? Any still, relief in there still at all? Very hot. Temperature is going to be up around what the odds on that horse were, so or even higher than that. What was it, 80 to 1 or something? Something like that, yes. No, that, that, that's nothing compared to what it's going to be like as far as temperatures. But it won't be uh, triple digits, though. Good. We had two of them over the weekend, of course. Lots of clouds out there and uh, a ton of humidity. Temperature right now stands at 77. That number... 72 dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere wind out of the southeast at all it's doing is just continuing to pull in all that humidity and is going to be on the breezy side later on today with all that humidity out there that 77 feels like 78 not a lot above the actual air temperature, but enough when you're this early in the morning dealing with heat index readings and it still feels like 83 degrees with all the humidity down around Stinson right now. And then later on this afternoon, a lot of folks, especially the southern half of our area, 104 higher than that, 110 and even higher around Catula. And we do have heat advisories for our southern counties later on this afternoon into the early evening hours. And again, I keep emphasizing if, even if you don't have any formal heat advisories in your area, you definitely have to take it easy with this extreme heat. Mold is moderate. Grass and pecan are on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about um, 45 minutes or so. Cloudy, warm, and humid this morning. And then 97 for a high temperature today. That's going to tie the record today. Of course, we set a record Saturday and one degree from the record on uh, yesterday, both days, 101. Heat index will be 105. It is going to be breezy today. Tomorrow, hot, a stray storm off to the west. 
don't get really excited about this. Folks off to the west, yeah, there's a, an okay chance for some of these storms to pop up, but uh, it's pretty much going to be limited out to the uh, west, it looks like. And then the rest of the week, yes, it will stay hot, about 10 degrees above normal, but not as hot as what we had over the weekend or today. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Anything? Big? Yeah, unfortunately, Mike, we have those flashing lights out here at I-10 at Wurzbach. Let's get a closer view from TransGuide because we are seeing multiple first responders that are out there in at least two vehicles uh, right now that are being seen from this view at TransGuide. You can see them right there off. Uh, this does appear that it's on the on-ramp, and you can see that it's blocked at this time. So uh, not a place you want to travel through, at least if you have to get onto I-10 uh, in that area. Area. So I just tweeted this out, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because we are seeing that off I-10 eastbound at Hebner Road. Drivers, keep in mind, that's in the eastbound lane, so that means you'll see that as you're coming into the downtown area if you are, if that is in your uh, destination in the next few moments. So just make sure to look for those alternative routes. We'll see how that impacts traffic as the morning does go on. But thankfully, not spotting any other issues at this hour, 632. The view of the metro area shows just more green than anything. So we are looking like we're in decent shape at this hour, but Let's take a look at those travel times. We'll go ahead and bypass that column work, but uh, take a look. We're almost green across the board, but we are seeing the usual slowdowns. 29 minutes on 281 southbound heading in from Bulverde, and that's because there is that road work taking place out there. So just remember, pack that patience this morning. But other than that, this is going to be the issue, at least for right now. We'll have more updates coming up a little bit later on right here on GMSA. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. A man who had plans to park his car found himself running for his life. He told police he ran after someone shot him at a parking garage near downtown. Katrina Weber is live where it happened off West Park Avenue and North Main. And Katrina, we know that parking garage is owned by Alamo Colleges. Is there any chance the victim is a student? Well, I suppose it is possible. Uh, we're about a block away from San Antonio College. However, police did not make any mention of him being a student. They described him only as a, being a man in his 20s. Now, he told police that the shooting happened here, but they did find him at a bar not far from here in the 1500 block of North Main. That man told police he went to the heat bar for help. He says he was inside the parking garage around 1.30 this morning when three men with all black clothing and masks approached him. One of them shot him in the leg. Police say this may have been the result of a robbery, although they did not say whether anything had been stolen, and they are still investigating. The victim was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. Just in the last uh, hour or so that we've been here, we have seen uh, quite a police presence, police from the Alamo Colleges District. They've been driving by and definitely making their presence known in this area. And again, this case still being investigated. The shooter is still out there somewhere. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police trying to piece together an overnight stabbing incident on the city's northwest side. This happened around 1230 this morning on a street called Santa Monica, not far from I-10 and Fredericksburg Road. Officers tell us that a man in his 40s called for help, saying he was stabbed at another location. So he is in the hospital now and we're told he is OK. At this time, details are limited. So you can look for updates to this story later in the newscast and on our website at kset.com. San Antonio police are trying to find a driver who left a mother dead last night. The medical examiner says 44-year-old Jessica Harper died after a crash on Culebra and Alabo Downs just inside Loop 410. That's where officers say a black GMC Yukon ran a red light, hitting the car Harper was in. She was taken to a hospital where she later died from her injuries. A 74-year-old woman was also in the car and suffered a broken arm. On the one-year anniversary of Soraya Perez's death, her family honored her life and legacy. Last Mother's Day, Soraya was shot and killed at a car show after an apparent argument led to gunfire. Soraya's mother, Cassandra Mendoza, and grandmother, Cynthia Alvarez, says she's still with them and have kept their name in the community by starting a group called Soraya Lee Anna's Blessings. Their goal? To never have another family go through what they went through. Andrew Ray Elizondo is facing a felony murder charge in Soraya's death. If convicted, he could face 99 years in prison. Elizondo's next court date is set for July 18th.
A victory now overshadowed by some controversy. Voters gave the green light for Northside ISD's nearly billion dollar bond this weekend. The money meant to help renovate older schools in the district. However, now Governor Greg Abbott says the district may be under investigation. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what we know about this unfolding situation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. This all stemming from a questionable post on social media and the governor seeing that post and responding to it. We spoke with the Northside ISD Teachers Federation who says it did approve and support the $992 million bond. The Federation's chief of staff explained to us that although they're pleased with the May 7th election results, on occasion they voiced concerns that staff were potentially pressured to go and vote. They say this happened potentially two to three times. Those same concerns were shared on Twitter in a form of alleged leaked emails. Governor Greg Abbott responded to that Twitter thread saying an investigation could happen, but admits the posts still need to be verified. Northside AFT did endorse this bond. We know that the bond is important. Uh, we are glad this bond passed. I will say that we did bring some concerns to the attention of district leadership uh, on, on several occasions. She says the league did not come from the union. She says that they that while they did express concerns, they are unclear if those concerns were resolved by the district. Now, we did call I Northside ISD and sent emails to the Public Information Office asking if the district did address those concerns and if they were resolved. We still have not heard back at this time. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Later today, Governor Greg Abbott is set to visit San Antonio once again as he campaigns for governor. He's scheduled to be at the Pika Pika Plaza Event Center at 6 p.m. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke stopped by San Antonio last week. The battle over abortion rights appears to be heading to the Senate floor. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced Sunday he will be putting a bill to codify Roe v. Wade up for a vote later this week. Democrats are hoping they can preserve abortion rights that way. On the other side, 13 states have something called trigger laws, which would quickly ban abortion if Roe is overturned. The trigger law in Texas would take effect 30 days after Roe is overturned. A relatively rare East Coast earthquake centered northeast of South Carolina's capital jolted large numbers of state residents awake overnight. A number of people took to social media to describe being shaken from their sleep. Authorities saying a 3.3 magnitude quake struck. This time there are no reports of any injuries there in South Carolina. And meanwhile, a much larger earthquake hit Taiwan overnight. Authorities recording it as a 6.6 .6 magnitude. At this time, there are no reports of any damages. And the Japan Meteorological Agency says there is no danger of a tsunami. Caught on camera, a landslide topples onto an Alaska roadway. And we're having some video problems. There it is. All right, you can see dozens of trees falling over. This is happening in the town of Seward, Alaska. While no one was hurt, the collapse cleanup is still underway, and that road is going to be closed for a little while. People needing to get to Seward are now having to use water taxis, which is not altogether unusual. And now to the ultimate upset. You have likely heard about the shocking results from the Kentucky Derby this weekend. It was so fun to watch, but the stories of the two men behind the winning horse are also quite remarkable. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. Rich Strike lived up to his name at the Kentucky Derby, becoming the second biggest long shot to ever win the race. At 80 to 1 odds, a $2 bet on Rich Strike would have made you $163. And when we turned it for home, the, the rail opened off and we did it, my man. It's the first major win for 32-year-old jockey Sonny Leone. He had never ridden a horse that earned more than $251,000 for a race. The Kentucky Derby's winning purse, $1.86 million. We heard that the jockey actually raced here, so that was pretty interesting, and we've heard some people uh, win. Most of Leon's races have been in Youngstown, Ohio, where he's described as a hard worker. Everyone's super excited. A lot of our locals, a lot of our regulars that are familiar with him, uh, bet on him to support him. Rich Strikes trainer Eric Reed also has a remarkable underdog story. Reed nearly walked away from the sport in 2013 when nearly two dozen of his horses died after lightning hit their barn. Reed told the Courier-Journal, I just thought of all the years and all the stuff we had done to get this beautiful farm 
and have this happen, that something might be telling me it's the end of the line. I couldn't be happier. I got my father with me. My family's here. And this horse was special. The Preakness is the second leg of the Triple Crown. That race is May 21st, and Rich Strike has been invited. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. You remember Mattress Mac was making the big bets? Yeah. He bet on Epicenter. Oh. And Epicenter finished in the top three, but Not Rich Strike won right. the whole thing. 641, about 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to take a look at the end of the basic military training journey, graduation day. It's a story we first brought you here on GMSA, looking at the United States Air Force's basic military training. And after eight rigorous weeks of boot camp at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, the day all cadets and a lot of families have long waited for basic military training graduation. Yeah, we'd be clapping too. Jonathan Cota walks us through the greatly anticipated graduation ceremony where a cadet officially becomes a U.S. Airman. It's an early morning start at Lackland Air Force Base. Hundreds of families and friends gathering from across the country to see their loved ones graduate from the United States Air Force basic military training. But before all the pomp and circumstance, they'll get through breakfast chow, they'll get the dorm set up, and then they go straight into the airman's run. In formation, flights of trainees take to the retreat pad for the two and a half mile airman's run. The sounds of Air Force Jody's or Cadence calls echoing loud and proud for all to hear. physical transformation will make many unrecognizable, but this is where family and friends will get to spot them for the very first time since they left for BMT. Once the run is over, they'll go back to the dorm, shower, go and get ready into whatever the uniform of the day is for graduation ceremony. The beat of drums, flight by flight, they march tall in review. This is the moment these young men and women strongly reassert their oath of enlistment. They've officially gone from trainees to airmen in the United States Air Force. I, American Airmen, guarding the freedom and justice. And without further ado, families and friends take to the retreat pad for the highly anticipated tapping out. Yeah, I'm good. I'm anxiously looking for their airmen to tap them on the shoulder and reunite. These men and women accomplishing something most Americans will never do. It feels great. We went through a lot, but to be able to do it together and be able to graduate with everyone was a good, a good experience for us. I wanted to play basketball, but somehow I prayed and God led me here. I learned a lot from O&L MTI and also the Chain Up Command and uh, really appreciate that everything they did for us to become a better man every day. And now they stand that much taller, that much prouder. Their instructors seeing them through the entire eight week life changing journey. Just seeing that they, they set their mind to something and they were able to accomplish it and literally seeing that transformation from civilian into airmen and now they're gonna go out and do amazing things for our Air Force. It's one of the best feelings in the world. For some, joining the ranks of the United States Air Force was a dream of service to country. For others, it was just a great opportunity. From here, these brave men and women will be heading out to their technical training schools across the country to serve the United States Air Force in meeting their mission of supplying air power anywhere, anytime. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Jonathan. Let's get a look at the roadways right now. We are seeing some progress here at I-10 and Wurzbach. We're seeing uh, less first responders out there, but I did notice that an ambulance did leave this scene. So we're hoping that the driver that was possibly involved in this crash is OK. So uh, but let's get a look at the traffic in that area because we are starting to see things pick up from this shot at Transguide. Uh, there it's reported off I-10 eastbound at Hebner Road. Thankfully, we're not really seeing a delay in traffic in that direction, but just as always, make sure you move over or slow down for those first responders out there. Uh, not sure if that crash will clear in time for morning rush, but we aren't seeing any need to rush out the door just yet. We are seeing a little bit of a slowdown there off 1604 and US 90. So again, just remember to take it easy this morning. There's no need to rush out the door. And as a reminder, make sure you plan ahead. There is some rail work that is current and we'll be wrapping up on Friday, May 27th out there at Wurzbach Parkway. That's from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. So that's when you can expect that single lane closure in both directions from Northwest Military Highway to Blanco Road. But other than that, things look like they could be clear here though, Mike. Here's one of those pictures just because we've seen <laughs> Gryffindor before in KSAC Connect photos and now a little butterfly on his head. Aww.
Yeah, wings were drying out almost dry after hatching. Found it on his bowl. Love the tongue sticking out there. Too. Precious. Yeah, it's just it, just, it's just like of, again. Oh. Looks like hooch from Turner and Hooch. Aww. Yes, it does. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Lots of clouds around there this morning and temperatures mid and upper 70s, 79 at Stinson. And then you factor in the humidity. Heat index is 83 right now. Stinson 78 at the uh, airport. 76 is what it feels like at New Braunfels. And we're going to be staying pretty steady the rest of the morning. And then already by mid morning, getting up into the mid 80s, 87 at 11 o'clock, 90 at at noon, wind begins to pick up later on this morning out of the south. Decent breeze right now, but it's going to be 10, 20 miles per hour and gusting on top of that. And we'll have partly cloudy skies today. 97 or a high temperature, which will tie the record for today. Of course, you got to factor in the humidity. We have heat index readings are going to be around 104 here in town and hotter down to the south. 110 or even higher than that, and that's prompting heat advisories for some of our extreme southern counties. So we have the mixture of sunshine and clouds today. Now, jumping ahead to tomorrow, there is a chance with this disturbance coming across the river from Mexico that we will see a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms in some of our western counties. And those may indeed try and hold together in through the uh, later evening hours. Perhaps, kind of have to watch out with this because sometimes these uh, storm systems tend to sort of become, uh, get a mind of their own, if you will, and hold together in the overnight hours. It's doubtful right now, but that's something we can uh, definitely watch out for. And there is the chance that some of those storms, one or two, just the isolated severe storm, high winds and hail to be the biggest threats, and that's confined right there along the, the Rio Grande from Eagle Pass up in toward Del Rio. As far as the uh, upper level steering winds, we've got this big high temperature or high High pressure area, pardon me, and that's what's helping to create the high temperatures around here. That's just sitting on top of us, and that's going to remain in place for the next couple of days. And it won't be as hot, but we're still going to be about 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures throughout the rest of the week. 90 at noon today. The high temperature get, makes it up to 97. Again, that ties the record for today. So we hit a record on Saturday within one degree of it yesterday, and then we uh, tie it today. Heat index is going to be right around 105 in town, obviously higher than that down to the uh, south. And then we go into the next few days and temperatures, albeit won't be as hot, still by averaging about 10 degrees above normal morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. 651, about 76 degrees. And women are rising to new highs. However, is the glass ceiling getting stronger tomorrow on GMSA? We're talking about if it really is harder for women to get promoted at work. As we get ready to transition to New York and Good Morning America, at the top of the hour, we will wrap up GMSA after this. Good morning, everyone. Time now is just about 6.55. Let's get a look at the roadway. I-10 at Wurzbach Parkway, or Wurzbach, that is. We are seeing some progress there. Not completely cleared yet, but we do have a crash in that area, so watch for those first responders right there at I-10 eastbound at Hebner Road. But other than that, everywhere else in the metro area is looking pretty quiet, and no need to rush out the door, but keep in mind, 30 minutes from 281 southbound, Mike. You may want to start the car not to heat it up, but to cool it down because it is warm and humid out there. Lots of clouds right now and temperatures have been pretty steady all morning long, mid and upper 70s. And then a heat index 79 right now, Stinson, but it feels like 83. We'll make it up to 90 at noon, 97 high temperature. That's going to tie the record today and wind is going to be out of the southeast 10, 20 miles per hour and gusty. Tomorrow, first of all, uh, heat index readings 105, 110, even higher than that, especially down to the south later on today. Tomorrow, a stray shower thunderstorm off to the west. One or two of those out there. Otherwise, just going to stay hot. Not as hot the rest of the week, but still just hot and humid this week. No doubt about that. We'll get through it. Thank you, guys. And thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day. GMA is next.